All right, welcome back to MP2. So before we go on, I just wanna make sure that you are done with the server support for adding a favorite place because nothing that we really do going forward is gonna work without that working. So at this point, you can see I'm passing that test case, all good. Um, my working tree is clean, which in Git means that I've committed and, and pushed all my changes. So I'm in a good place to start on the next part of MP2. So at this point, we've added support for posting a favorite place to your server. What we haven't done is add support for that to our client. And this is actually hopefully a fairly easy test case to pass um, in terms of the amount of code you have to write. It's also very similar to another method that we've already given you. And so I'm just gonna sort of walk you through the process a little bit and, and point out a couple of places where things might not be super obvious. Um, all right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm, I'm open up this. Uh, try to figure out why it's failing. Well, okay, it's failing because I haven't implemented uh, this method yet. It's a good reason. Um, let's go ahead and let's see. I'm just going to run uh, this test all by itself because I'm, I'm zeroing in on, on what I need to do here. Now, when we look at post favorite place, one of the goals of this part of the MP is to help you learn how to add functionality by sort of drawing information from the existing code base. So there's a method in the code base right here. Uh, let me uh, minimize this called get places and it creates a string request and then adds that string request to the volley queue which causes the request to be made so this is an example of how to make an http request using android's http library called volley um, so this is a good starting point now i'm gonna have to make some changes to this because i'm making a post request i'm making it to a different url uh, the response is a little bit different, uh, but let's go ahead and use this as our starting point. So I'm going to take out uh, this to-do comment and put in this, and I'll call this post favorite plays request. So this is calling the string request constructor, and, and you see some places where you're going to have to make changes. So for example, it's uh, using the HTTP method get. Get is used to move data from the server to the client. That's appropriate when I'm fetching the list of places. It's not appropriate when I'm sending a new place. So I need to update that. Um, the URL is wrong, right? Because that's the route used to retrieve places, not the route used to add a place. Um, and then what happens on a response is also different because when I retrieve the list of places, it's a get request and the server is sending me back data, which happens to be JSON, which I, didn't, I then deserialize. And I'm actually passing that data back to the client. In this case, my callback takes a, a result might throw that wraps a boolean. Um, and that's just to indicate whether or not uh, it succeeded or failed. And so this can also just really needs to be cleaned up and, and is much simpler actually, because I don't get any data back from the server. I just find out, did this work or not? Okay, um, now the, the trick here, and you may be wondering, you know, if you, if you look at this, uh, and actually let's go ahead and add this. This is really easy to, to forget um, because it's sort of buried down here, but I actually have to uh, have Volley make the request. Um, Okay, so what's missing here, right? You might say, well, wait, hold on. I'm posting information about a new favorite place to the server. I was past that place to this method, but it's not used anywhere. Where does that go? And this is a little tricky. Uh, and this is the part I'm gonna go over uh, with you so that uh, you have some idea of, of how to approach this. Now, the string request, when I create a string request here, this whole thing between this parentheses and this parentheses is a call to the constructor. Now, what we need to do in order to provide a body for the request is we actually have to override string request and override this method. So we actually have to use this, this anonymous object syntax that we looked at uh, sort of toward the end of our lessons on object orientation, which is kind of neat. You get to see this in action. So I open up a new block um, and then I'm going to start, I'll, I'll hit override. And now I get a list of the different methods on this uh, string request that I can override. Um, and there's two of them right here that I'm going to need to use. The first one is called get body. You'll see that this returns a byte array. But it's actually not that hard to convert a string to a byte array. So I'll show you how to do that. So let's say I wanted to return uh, a post that had the body test. I do this, I do get bytes, and then I use standard utf 8 This is actually really important, particularly if you're working on Windows, because Windows uses like a non, a stupid old non-standard care set. Um, and so make sure you pass this to get bytes. This will take the string test and convert it to bytes using the UTF-8 standard for mapping between characters and 
numbers essentially, right? So we talked about, remember ASCII? We talked about this a long time ago, right? So this essentially tells it how to map between characters and the, the numbers that computers use to communicate with each other. All right, so now my post request is gonna have the body test as a string. That's not what I want, but we're sort of on the right track, right? So what I really need to do is I need to take this place and I need to serialize it. So I need to take the place and convert it to a string and then use that as the body. The other thing I need to set, and, and this is something that's you know sort of uh, also not obvious, so we'll, we'll uh, just do it together, is I need to, whenever you send data to a server, um, usually what we do is we tell the server something about the information to allow it to parse it properly. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it what type of information it is, and I'm also gonna tell it what the character set was that was used to encode it. Um, now here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go uh, grab this off of my server because it's this uh, string right here. Um, and again, it's not something that I would have expected you to figure out without a you know, fair amount of um, you know, messing around. And, uh, but what this does is it tells the server two things. This is JSON that's in the body, and then this is the care set that was used to encode it. Okay, so now we're on the right track, right? And I'm gonna leave you here and let you finish up. So what do you need to do? You need to adjust this string request so that it does the right thing. Does it post instead of get, post to the right URL, and handles the result properly. And then you also have to make sure that the place that's passed to post favorite place gets serialized and the resulting JSON as a string gets inserted into the body of the request. Once you've done that, you'll be able to pass this test case. And again, this is probably one of the easier test cases that's part of MP2, just in terms of the amount of code that you have to write. So get this done, and then we'll move on to designing our activity.